Hey everyone, welcome to Dirk Island, where we talk usually about documentaries. This week though, we're talking about a Netflix movie called Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile, which is done by Joe Berlinger. It's about Ted Bundy. Uh, Zac Efron stars as Ted Bundy. And the reason we're talking about it is because we just talked about the Ted Bundy documentary that was also done by Joe Berlinger on Netflix. So this is kind of the movie that follows that up. Uh, Cover some of the same ground, but also from a very different uh, fictionalized perspective. And now to the ultimate question Is it worth watching? You go with six. Maybe worth it. Uh, I liked having watched the Ted Bundy tapes and then this in conjunction, seeing two different angles on the same person and phenomena. That was interesting to me. I think if I hadn't seen the Ted Bundy tapes, I would have liked it less. I think for those I watched it with who hadn't seen the Ted Bundy tapes, really didn't like it. Um, so for me, it was interesting getting inside. I like Joe Berlinger as a director. I thought he did a good job with just the Ted Bundy topic overall. Um, I'm a fan. I feel like if you're gonna watch either, you just should watch the Ted Bundy tapes and this is the skippable factor. But if you're a fan of both and kind of interesting in two angles on the same thing, which I often am, um, it's kind of kind of unique. I give it a five, which is barely worth watching, which I feel a little bad about as far as how low this rating is, but the reason is this. I, I, we watched the Ted Bundy tapes not too long ago, and we both really loved them. We both gave an 8, which is basically the highest rating we give, outside of one being like, oh, this should be nominated for an Oscar. You gotta or, go like, out of your way you and gotta see go out, this. Yeah, and even people who don't watch documentaries yet. So, we gave it a very, very high score. We really liked it. It was really impactful. I thought it was great. And so, maybe then I have a standard that this is not uh, living up to. And it's not to say that it wasn't uh, entertaining. It was entertaining and Zac Efron was somewhat compelling from a fiction standpoint and did an interesting job and there was a lot to it and the story itself is pretty interesting but there are probably two reasons I would say that I'm going pretty low with this the first is that it misplaces why Ted Bundy was charismatic I think that Zac Efron although he did a good job Watching this movie, it almost leads you to believe that the main reason that Ted Bundy was so, um, in a way, likable was because he was just straight up attractive, which Zac Efron is. I mean, Zac Efron, just to be real about it, is like one of the most attractive people who's like a Hollywood, you know, star, right? He's like, like when he busts out of jail and puts on his like almost like village people outfit where he's got the uh, like bandana around his head, it's like a quick change. But like Zac Efron does, he's like this freaking buff guy, like looking at people, like turning heads on the street. And it's like, it's. Okay, that's a way to play it, right? But in reality, I think the Ted Bundy's like he he was like reasonably attractive, but he's not like crazy attractive. He's more of a he's he's intelligent. He's a talker. He's slick. That's the creepiest thing about him. So I felt that although the Zac Efron character was seemingly intelligent and slick too. He was almost too attractive for the actual role. It makes you almost believe as the viewer that one of the reasons why Ted Bundy was like compelling was maybe because of his attractiveness when in reality I think the most interesting part is he was like okay looking but he was like really <laughs> slick. Really slick. So creepy. And that's probably the other thing too. I think that uh, the Ted Bundy character, the thing that I think is so interesting about it is how mm -hmm. creepy he is. Now, it doesn't have anything to do with attractive, whatever. How, how, how creepy the character is. And they didn't let Zac Efron be creepy enough. They didn't let him be creepy enough. The uncanniness of the slickness behind the sociopath. He really was almost, because the movie was almost trying to put you in the, the place of ignorance, like the ex-girlfriend put you in the place of, did he do it or didn't he do it, which is a choice that the director made. Uh, we didn't get to just believe that he did do it, and everything he was doing was then viewed through this extremely slick and then therefore creepy, extremely creepy version that is the real Ted Bundy. And so uh, that's, that's really the reason that I thought uh, I didn't get to 
don't watch it in the way that I think is the most compelling about Ted Bundy, which the Ted Bundy tapes have, which is every time you're watching this guy on film, you cannot believe him. Not because he's attractive, not because whatever, but because he tells lies so convincingly, he seems so intelligent, and it's just terrifying for that reason. And mm. unfortunately, that was not in the, uh, the, the Zac Efron biopic because it was... And, you know, and obviously movies put attractive people in them. And that is like because people like to go watch attractive people. You know, that's why perfume ads have all the most attractive people and watch ads have all the most attractive people. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, realistically, like that's probably going to help movies. Like that's why Zac, Zac Efron is very successful. He's, in a, he's a good actor, but he's also very attractive. And... You know, when you have, like, biopics, yeah, you're picking from, like, the Zac Efron's and the Christian Bale's and the Leonardo DiCaprio's of the world. And, like, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But here I felt like it, uh, because the Ted Bundy character is so interesting because of the charisma, having too much of the charisma maybe in the attractiveness, physical attractiveness character side of it, as opposed to just this the savvy speaking side of it, um, was, uh, it might have been better if a less attractive person perhaps was the Ted Bundy character character because then we would have really been pulled in more in the way that Ted Bundy was pulling in people. Or at least it seems like he was. Interesting. I mean, I totally agree with with your critique of it. There was something missing in this. I just was kind of willing to... I, I still liked it despite yeah, that. Totally like yeah. kind of a fun watch, which is why I feel... Uh, tough about it. I just think that um, I think it's valid. I mean, yeah. I think and I think a lot of people, especially the ones who aren't watching the tapes and don't know the story are going to just feel like there's so much missing, especially your expectations versus what this film chooses to focus on. Yeah, and if I was to just go back on it, if I was to say if someone's watching this and has not watched either the they are both on Netflix. If you have if you're choosing between the fictionalized version with Zac Efron by the same person Joe Berlinger or the Ted Bundy Tapes documentary on Netflix also by the same guy. Uh, I would highly recommend the documentary version, the Ted Bundy Tapes. It is fantastic, and I really liked it. And uh, so that's where I would point people to. Could not agree more. Okay, thanks very much for watching. If you want to keep up with us, please um, subscribe here on YouTube, or you can listen to the podcasts, which are available on Apple Podcasts. Thanks very much. Thank you.